You know, with all the data that's instantly accessible with the click of a button, it's easy to get mixed up and bogged down with false or outdated information. My name's Austin, and let's be honest, technology has made life pretty convenient, and I use modern media just as much as anyone else. But as easy as it is to find good information on the internet, it's just as easy to make decisions based on rumors that might have started with the best intentions, like saying bless you after someone sneezes to protect them from death. So with that being said, let's take a look at five pervasive myths that you may have heard regarding your metabolic health. Myth number one, it's better for my metabolism to eat lots of small meals throughout the day. Many people believe that eating smaller, more frequent meals throughout the day boosts metabolism and helps control weight. This idea has been popular for a while, but the science to support it just isn't there. In fact, recent research shows a clear path to fat loss might actually be through time-restricted eating, which is in complete contrast to the idea of eating several small meals a day. To bust the myth even further, some studies suggest that eating more frequently, depending on what you're eating of course, can actually cause glucose and insulin levels to remain higher than they should throughout the day. Okay, I'm glad we addressed that one. Myth number two, glucose spikes are normal and nothing to worry about. So blood sugar levels are bound to fluctuate somewhat throughout the day. Food, exercise, mood, and sleep can all lead to a small rise and fall in blood sugar. But it's important to pay attention to the degree of these fluctuations because extreme glucose variability has been linked to heart disease, diabetes, and metabolic dysfunction. A glucose spike here or there may not be a cause for concern, but chronically elevating your glucose over several days, weeks, and especially months is not normal and can result in insulin resistance in the near future. Myth number three, sugar will give me an energy boost. Well, for a short period of time, sugar may have you flying high and feeling on top of the world, but this effect never lasts long, typically comes with a terrible sugar crash, and is even sometimes followed by feelings of regret. I would know. When insulin brings your glucose levels down after your indulgence, you may begin to feel shaky, foggy, or even hungrier than you were before the sugar bin. In fact, recent studies show that sugar doesn't lead to an improvement in mood or alertness, but instead seems to bring on increased fatigue in the hour following sugar consumption. Myth number four, I should only worry about added sugar, not natural sugar. Okay, I'm not telling you to start avoiding natural sugar in sources like an apple. Natural sugars in the whole food form tend to come with fiber, which slows the glucose absorption and can blunt a spike. But these same natural sugars that you find in fruit juices, where the fiber is stripped, can cause significant glucose spikes. So natural sugar isn't without its consequences. Of course, we know that added sugar can affect a person's blood sugar levels more than natural sugars in whole form, but overconsumption of natural sugar is still something worth paying attention to, especially if you're working on becoming metabolically healthy. And myth number five, thin people don't need to worry about glucose or metabolic health. I can debunk this myth personally because several years ago I was as thin as could be, but my doctor told me that I was borderline pre-diabetic. People who have a healthy weight can still have a high percentage of fat and low percentage of lean mass. This is often because of visceral fat, which sneaks its way into the abdominal cavity around organs and is more dangerous to health than the fat just below the skin. While obesity is associated with insulin resistance, even people with healthy body weight can have poor metabolic health and be on the way to experiencing other concerning health conditions. Look. I know there's a ton of information out there and it can be hard to discern between what's helpful versus harmful. So if you want to dig into the science behind these health myths and learn more about metabolic health in general, be sure to check out the full length blog post that's linked in the description of this video. If you used to believe any of the myths that were just busted, that's okay, I did too. Science is continuing to evolve and as long as our knowledge base evolves with it, we can continue to stay on track in pursuit of optimal metabolic health. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.